My name is Jeremy Johnston. I'm one of the curators with Darling Green who organized Gladness and Rain at Printed Matter. It's a survey of the work of Hungarian artist Andrei Tóth. Tóth is primarily known for his text-based works, performances, publications, photographs uh, that challenge uh, the state censorship apparatus of Hungary in the 1970s. Um, we begin our show with um, an important archival photo that was published in Life magazine of the Hungarian uprising. And it shows the Hungarian flag, which was repurposed, reclaimed by the militia units during the revolution by cutting out the center, removing the communist emblem from the center of the Hungarian flag, um, and thereby reclaiming their independence. Um, and this kind of notion of the removal or absence or erasure of something appears in, in Andre Tote's work over and over. And we have a photograph uh, here also of him reading a newspaper with a hole cut out in the center. And he's laughing with this sort of or overemphasized gladness at his ability to read the newspaper, which actually consists of an absence. Tote had a successful career in Budapest in the 1960s as an art informal painter, an abstract painter, and there was a softening of the political situation in Hungary in the 1960s that allowed for more abstract art, allowed for more international communications. Uh, but Tote rejected painting um, to take on this more experimental text-based uh, and photo-based practice. The Hungarian government in the 1970s uh, categorized artists under three designations, promote, tolerate, and ban. Uh, so promote were a group of artists or writers who reinforced uh, the government's ideology, their, their messaging. Um, tolerate you know, was a group of artists who maybe weren't tracking with that official policy, but weren't challenging the government in any way. And then banned, of course, were artists that were directly working with political content, or in some ways their work ran counter to the state's goals. And those people could ha lose their teaching position or have their apartment taken away, be um, you know, as exiled or even imprisoned uh, for working in this manner. And Tote continuously sort of played with the very border between tolerated and banned. Um, and his work often used a set of images that were difficult for these approval committees or censorships to identify and uh, continuously used things that, you know, in which they couldn't detect or, or um, you know, identify the, the sarcasm or irony or humor involved. And so our show has three broad themes that intertwine, that, that run throughout Tote's uh, work in this period. And that's gladnesses, um, zeros, and rains. In the early 1970s, when Tote forsook painting uh, for more text-based works, he adopted the zero uh, as his emblem. Uh, and he called this his zero tendency. Um, and in the late 60s, early 70s, there were many zeros. There was the year zero, zero grupa, the idea of a kind of a null that was simultaneously a new beginning. Uh, for Tote, I think it's interesting that he acknowledges right from the beginning that, that zero is not really zero and that nothing is never nothing um, and sort of alludes to zero's mathematical sig significance as uh, an absence but also as a kind of endless multiplier, a kind of a, a pointing towards endless numerical value. Tote also, in the early 70s, began a series of works that he called gladnesses. And gladnesses, also, he also referred to them as joys, are these works in which he expresses his gladness at being able to take uh, any number of actions. Um, Tote had a photograph taken of himself gazing, you know, gazing upwards at the, at the red star. Um, and, you know, the, the title is something along the lines of, you know, it, it makes me happy to gaze at something nice. And he has another photograph of himself standing next to a sculpture of Lenin, and it's uh, titled, I'm glad to be standing next to you. And again, he has this broad grin on his face.
which for the government would seem to be reinforcing their their policies and a and a kind of happiness under under the state regime. Uh, but anyone associated with Tote internationally or locally would see the sense of humor and see uh, the irony and sarcasm involved. In the first offset work that we have in the show, um, the statement in Hungarian and then mirrored in English uh, is simply, I was glad to have this printed. Uh, and so the innocuousness of, of printing this edition, which um, which he was able to do illegally at the time. It was not possible to print anything in Hungary without uh, some sort of committee approval, um, aside from maybe a business card. Uh, he would go at night to these offset print shops, which um, would, would produce some small addition for him in trade for a, a bottle or two of wine. Um, so on the one hand, he's performing an action that has serious consequences. and. Um, if he were caught or if the print shop were caught, he would certainly uh, face reprisals. But what he's doing with it is is sort of uh, an empty statement. Um, and so if he were caught, there wouldn't necessarily be any political content in the statement. Um, and this is true of most of his mail art and subsequent publications uh, where he would send huge numbers of letters and postcards through the mail that were letters that were composed of zeros. Um, so when they were opened and read by the censors, there was no overt political content. Um, but he was driving, you know, to Zagreb, to Belgrade, multiple post offices in and out of Hungary to try to mail more and more material um, to uh, an increasing list of international correspondents. It's interesting to see his choice to abandon painting and adopt a more international um, role in, in, in what was happening in Fluxus and what was happening in conceptual art globally, and then um, apply himself to this purely through the mail. And he created a huge network of correspondence. And there were multiple people doing this in Eastern Europe, and there were, in fact, address lists circulating. There were many semistat texts uh, circulating. Uh, so on the one hand, um, I think Tote felt very isolated. I think many artists in the Eastern Bloc countries felt some isolation and felt separate from the, the market economies of the so-called West. Um, but at the same time, there was a very active exchange of information and many people moving back and forth. And, um, many famous artists exhibiting in, in Prague, Hungary, Poland at the time, and many Hungarian artists gaining permission to travel. And um, it, in some sense, they were partly isolated, or some artists were isolated from what was happening internationally. And in another sense, they weren't isolated at all. And artists like Tote were easily able to participate and correspond through the mail with hundreds and hundreds of people um, and at one point, he says he was receiving back dozens of things every day um, in his mailbox in Budapest and becoming sort of increasingly paranoid that, that this was going to attract the notice of the government. Um, but he says at the time that he, he, you know, he was lucky with the Postal Service, that it worked flawlessly for him uh, and enabled this communications. Um, and, and in a way, he had a... Uh, a very active and um, art career outside of Hungary, a much more active presence internationally than he, than he did um, in his home country. Tote had occasionally been allowed to travel outside of Hungary for exhibitions, notably the Fluxu show in 1973 in the UK, organized by David Mayer. Um, and also uh, his residency at Eckhart. Um, and in 1978, he was awarded a residency, the DAAD residency in Berlin, and the government refused his travel um, uh, for almost a year uh, until there was some notice of it in the international press and, and the government um, relented and allowed him to travel. Uh, and he never returned. He emigrated first to Berlin and then to Cologne. Uh, 
and for the first time was able to enact many of the protest works and performance works that he had been planning for years um, in Budapest. Uh, and so this travel to Berlin in the late 1970s led to a, a burst of activity, um, including street actions, postering, demonstrations, um, and these videos show some of these still photographs of these early Berlin demos where he would walk around uh, carrying signs saying, I'm looking for nobody, I'm going nowhere, and similar things. And then also uh, demonstrations carrying zero banners uh, or carrying gladness statements uh, such as, oh, you know, we're glad to be holding this in our hands. Um, and interestingly, the, these activities, which in Budapest just months earlier would have led um, t certainly to, to reprisals, um, it would have been very dangerous to do these kinds of performances there. Uh, once he was in Berlin, they were met with a kind of an apathy. Uh, you know, there wasn't, he didn't get much of a response. And he himself noticed this kind of immediate difference between the two zones. Um, the video also has some later demonstrations that show some exhibitions that he was able to participate in, such as the Works and Words at De Appel in, uh, in Amsterdam in 1979, um, and where he was able to do some demonstrations um, up until um, uh, the Protest and Survive show curated by Matthew Higgs and Paul Noble at Whitechapel in 2000, or, or where there's uh, some footage here of a zero demonstration. And then associated publications that would document these. Again, bringing back the idea that the photograph and the photographic performance, the power of the photograph to convey something that was um, so uh, in the moment um, is very important to him. The third theme uh, in the exhibition that we focus on um, is called rain, and rain is the term that Tote uses for uh, repetitively typed uh, forward slashes, uh, typewritten slashes, which he would uh, type in, in fields completely covering postcards or sheets of paper um, or in, in patterns and groups and often with text notations uh, you know, such as my rain, your rain, isolated rain. Um, and rain, similar to zero, is based on a typewritten character, the forward slash, which Ben Duval in the text in the book writes elegantly that feels almost like the zero turned on its side. And they're similar to the, the repetitively typed zero um, performances that he would do. Um, where Tote would be invited to, to Fluxu in 1973, or we have some from Zagreb, some from the Accumulatory Project in Poland. Tote would set up with a typewriter and do these marathon typing performances, often on the letterhead of the institution who had invited him. And he would produce hundreds and hundreds of artworks. And we have a nice group of 25 in the show from Zagreb. Um, that shows this similarity to the rain where a kind of a saturation, a volume, and, and also a kind of a, a repetition, a sonic repetition to do with typing. The typewriters have their own emblematic importance. Uh, in the Eastern Bloc, in many Eastern Bloc countries, uh, typewriters were registered um, so that the authorities would be able to tell what letters were written on what typewriter and tie them to an individual. Having an unregistered typewriter um, um, could, could land you in a lot of trouble. Um, uh, so this shares the, the typewriter along with some other uh, uh, methodologies in Tote's work, rubber stamps, um, photography itself, uh, shares this kind of um, this use by border control, uh, control mechanisms of the authorities internationally, in fact, to track and identify their citizens and restrain their, their rights and movements. Um, but Rain, he applies with his typical sense of humor and, and he often uses commercially available postcards, uh, typewriting on them. Um, and some of the images in the postcards are significant. Um, such as the Hotel Intercontinental in Budapest, which was built in the 70s, 
The International Correspondence School and Mail Art Network uh, in the 1970s and the 80s you know, functioned as a kind of a global connective circuit. And it, it's interesting to note that many of these letters and postcards and objects sent through the mail were considered very ephemeral at the time. Uh, in fact, lots and lots of material was just thrown away or discarded or then r written or drawn on again and, and mailed forward. Uh, it was the process of mailing and receiving mail that seems to be, for, for many artists, uh, more important than um, making a traditional art object. Um, and subsequently, m most of this material, uh, if it was collected by institutions at all, ended up in libraries and archives rather than museum collections. Um, but then as time moves on, these objects begin to almost reemerge and acquire a new sort of power. Um, and so in this show, we, we exhibit um, you know, many envelopes, things that are just in essence addresses and stamps and letters between two participants that are now, they, they feel like art objects to us in a way that maybe is slightly different than they felt then. But this also reminds uh, us, reminded us as we organized the project that, that Tote's work functioned very much in this way as a personal exchange between uh, two places and two groups of people. Um, and many, many of his works allude to this distance and his situation compared to someone else's situation and then the idea of them connecting. Um, just as David Horvitz's uh, homage to Tote here, based on one of Tote's statements uh, that he used often, I write you because you are there and I am here. So on the one hand, his work, it, it has this kind of reductive idea art, uh, conceptual art, aesthetic sense with a very uh, narrow set of terms. But on the other hand, his work's incredibly personal um, and perhaps more about empathy than it is always just about intellectual uh, ideas. And that when Tote makes his rain works, you know, he reminds us that one person may be in the sun uh, while the other person is in the rain and having a sense of personal connection, even though we are in a wide variety of situations, uh, it might be the most important thing of all.